All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a big fan of him, and he's what I say the best local TV reporter in the country. He became a big star on the internet with millions of views to his videos. Drudge Report linking to it, DrudgeReport.com, Infowars.com. And uh, I remember about a month or two ago, I wanted to get him on, and he said, well, I'm not allowed to do interviews anymore, and uh, I'll be talking to you shortly. And I thought, well, that might mean he's going to be leaving. And sure enough, he's put out a video. We'll play a clip of it later, but why not just go right to him? He's won both a Edward R. Murrow Award, so he's uh, that's, that's, that's about as good as it gets, and two Lone Star Emmy Awards. He's from hailing from Texas. We're proud of that. Uh, he has specialized in covering the 2012 GOP uh, presidential primaries, the Ron Paul newsletter controversy, and Mexico's drug wars on the Texas border. He's a graduate of Brigham Young University with a master's in humanities at California State University before moving to Cincinnati and working for Reality Check. Swan spent 11 years of broadcast career uh, in El Paso, Texas, and KTSM TV. It goes on from there. And he looks like a cross between James Dean and Audie Murphy. And I tell you, get your butt back down here to Texas. Uh, and uh, maybe come to work for InfoWars. But no, I know you're probably going to go independent. Got a lot of offers. We're very excited to have you on with us, Ben. But first off, before we get into that, what do you think of the crazy North Korea stuff? Listen, I think you're making some really good points about it. I mean, this it's very strange when you have all the rhetoric. Just consider all the rhetoric that, that our government has put out regarding Iran and the potential of nuclear weapons in Iran and the possibility that Iran could get their hands on one. The fact that we had an Iraq war over the idea that Saddam Hussein might be looking for enriched uranium. And yet you have, for a fact, nuclear weapons in North Korea and everybody's saying, ah, don't worry about those guys. Ah, they're not going to do anything. He's blowing smoke. It's a very strange kind of uh, discussion back and forth between when you compare, again, the, the talking points and the rhetoric on one side and then with North Korea, it's a totally different situation. You're right. I, I, I've talked to a lot of experts. They've never seen the rhetoric this hot. I mean, North Korea is saying, we will nuke you. We're loading missiles. We're going to kill you. We're going to blow up Tokyo. I, I mean, right there, they should have already been a hit. And, and, and I mean, China better just stand back, but it's not happening. And then our government allowed the transfer of the reactors over a decade ago. I mean, this is crazy. Well, and you have to, you have to keep in mind, too, that what does North Korea really have to lose here? I mean, at this point, because of economic sanctions against them, we know that the people in North Korea are starving. Um, economic sanctions, as you know, don't really do anything to harm a country's dictator. It just harms the people within that country, and it makes people desperate. So why wouldn't North Korea now take some kind of, of monumental step and use a nuclear weapon? What would actually prevent them from doing that? And when people say things like, oh, this won't happen because consider the Cold War and the Cold War, the Soviets, they didn't want to get blown up. They didn't want to get killed. You know, folks in, uh, in the West, they didn't want to get killed. And so there was this standoff between them. It's not really the same situation when you consider where North Korea is. They don't really have a whole lot to lose at this point. You're absolutely right. We're going to break in a few minutes. I want to come back and talk about why you're uh, leaving or what you can tell us about uh, you know, where you're at, I know you're a nice guy, but it's certainly, uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, you were getting a little, you know, big for uh, people out there that don't want liberty promoted. But uh, I'm guessing there, we'll find out more. Uh, but but what else, uh, after we talk about that, do you want to get into? There's so much happening. Uh, what's your take on all the dishonesty from the Democrats about, oh, we just want to register your guns. We don't want to confiscate them when we all know they really want to take them. Yeah, and, and that's going to be a huge issue. You know, this whole issue of Second Amendment. Uh, and the Second Amendment rights is something we've really been talking a lot about uh, as of late. And by the way, I, I haven't been on your show since uh, you were on uh, Piers Morgan's program. We were supposed to talk shortly after that and, and wasn't able to. Um, and it was one of the best, you know, five minutes in television I've ever seen. But, you know, when you, when you look at the Second Amendment and what's happening right now around the country, it's truly remarkable because the rhetoric is such that, that folks in Washington are saying, we're not going to take your guns. We're not interested in your guns. Listen, if they're being honest, then they should say, forget about all the so-called assault weapons that are out there. And again, I think you brought up this point. What else? What is an assault weapon? Every weapon's an assault weapon. But we don't want the assault weapons. If, if they really meant that, they leave the assault weapons alone and they go and take away handguns. Because statistically, that's where the majority of gun crimes are committed. But they're not being honest because they're clearly moving through a process of disarm, disarmament. Uh, and it's taking place slowly. You've pointed it out many, many times. They before. want the guns that can fight back against a tyrannical government. Bottom line. But, but, you, but you made the point, and we had actually made this point a couple of weeks uh, prior to, and I was really glad that you used that moment on, on Piers Morgan's program to say this to the nation. But the bottom line is, when we talk about the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment is not about 
having rifles to hunt with. It's not. It's about matching equal force to government force and to military force. That's what it's there for. You know it. I know it. People across this nation know it. It's so a check and a balance. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ben Swan is our guest. We're going to give you his Facebook, Twitter, all his websites and everything. And I, and I can't wait to see what he ends up doing. Uh, he's, he's told me a little bit behind the scenes, but we'll see how much he can tell us on air straight ahead. Segment with Ben Swan and a bunch of other news. Uh, really an amazing newsman. Uh, won the Edward R. Murrow Award. I mean, he was very, very young. Uh, I guess he's been um, you know, a newsman for 15 years now uh, or so. And he's getting ready to leave uh, the station that he's uh, currently uh, at uh, up in Cincinnati, Ohio. So uh, why are you leaving uh, where are you going or what are you planning right now? Because I know you're in some deep discussions with other folks right now. What's right. the plan, Ben? You know, the plan right now is, is what we're really looking for is the strongest platform possible. Um, when we started doing Reality Check about two years ago, um, really had no idea how big it was going to get. Hadn't intended for it to become anything other than just a local news segment, but we were given freedom with it. And, and what a rare thing that is in media today given the freedom to talk about issues that we thought were important issues and issues that are affecting people all over the country. And so when we're talking about things like um, the, the political race in 2012, um, the stripping of credentials of delegates, of delegates being disenfranchised, the Ron Paul blackout, all of a sudden, you know, we start blowing up across the internet. And I come to find out there are millions of people in this country, tens of millions who have this liberty view that I thought was really just my own personal view. And I wasn't trying to force it on anyone, just trying to get people to look at things from a different perspective. Uh, and certainly as a journalist, you know, you're not trying to impose your view on people, but trying to get them to see things just from a, the paradigm. But the power structure knows liberty is popular. That's why they never want to give, give it a chance to get its roots going. And that's why they always try to suppress people. So bottom line, did you get told to back off? You know, it wasn't so much about being told to back off um, so much as the, the station has, you know, they're moving in a certain direction and they're uh -huh. obviously... You so just said not so much, well, they're listen, moving listen. in another direction. Well, no, that's how they do it. We don't off. like this direction. Let us nudge you. Be be honest. Be honest. They told you to knock it off. It really wasn't. It really wasn't. Uh -huh. These guys really want um, Cincinnati-centric and we want bigger issues. And so kind of my view of where it was headed was different. It's not... They they were always very supportive of what we were doing, so I want to want to make that clear. But it really was an issue of me saying, "Look, we're coming to an end of a contract, and now it's time to decide what to do." And I think the best thing to do is rather than trying to stay this path in Cincinnati, is to say, "What else is out there? What's the bigger platform?" Because I believe this, Alex. I believe the majority of Americans who don't know what the liberty movement is or the liberty message is, if you articulate it to them, they'll say, "Yeah, that's me." And so what we're trying to do is just open up people's minds and say, listen, maybe you are of this mindset. You just don't know it yet. I like well, to sure, Ben. I mean, America is asleep right now, by and large. Big sections have been woken up. You're on a big alarm clock going off. Uh, and I saw on the news you were highly rated, probably one of their most popular shows. And I think there's some professional jealousy. One thing I've noticed is, especially when you're in, a, you know, a, a, a just a local area you'd think the best horse in the race would be popular the truth is uh, there's a lot of professional jealousy that goes on and i'm not trying to get you to throw your colleagues under the bus uh but i mean come on all they really care about is ratings you were delivering ratings so i think that's a bunch of bull uh that oh just do local stuff yeah i can't i can't argue with you about that because our ratings were fantastic and moving up like crazy so uh we were doing extremely well and i hope they continue to do well uh, but again, I think it's just an, it's an issue now of platform and where's the next best thing. In fact, want to want to take a minute. I think you have a video there, and I don't know if you guys are planning to play any of that. Um, but one of the things I'm trying to do is get input from people uh, who have supported me over this time to give me input on what the next step is. And so we actually created a survey. I started a new website. It's benswan.com. Folks can go there and take a survey. And I know there are people who are concerned about data mining. We're not data mining you. We're not trying to get your information. So no, he, still... you want to get their feedback on what direction they want to see you go. That's smart, smart move. Yeah, that's what, I, what we want. We want to know what people think and whether or not they're willing to continue to support. Listen, you are a guy who has pioneered in many ways independent media in this country. I mean, you've, you've done things that nobody else had done before you, and you've really blazed a trail. Uh, what we want to do is find out if there's support for kind of the direction we want to go in. Uh, and really, one of the things we're focused on is how do we kind of translate streaming sites, because they're popping up everywhere. How do we translate that to make that kind of the, the forefront of the liberty movement battle for media?
Absolutely. We're going to come back and play a little bit of that video, and then I'm going to uh, get into the gun issue with you. But um, you were telling me off air, you're looking at going totally independent, even though you've got offers. Right. We have offers, and we're talking to some different folks, and we may do a kind of a combination where we work some with some, some bigger media, but also have the freedom to go independent. Yeah, well, I mean, I knew about this a, you know, a week or so ago that this was happening and hadn't really called you, but I told you during the break. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you're a Texan as well. I would, I, I'm not afraid of popular people. I'm not afraid of good looking people. I'm not afraid of people being bigger than Alex Jones. This platform is to take on the globalist. This platform is to defeat the new world order. So, I mean, I'll tell you, I'm too busy to ch chase you around, but if you want to come work with us, come down and check out the operation.